Hello and welcome back to another one of our videos where we uh, show off how uh, wonderful our products are and all the cool stuff that we built and make. So today we have a um, altitude simulation testing system. So we have actually two of these, but they're identical, but we're just going to focus on this one because it's plugged in and whatnot in, into the electricity. So let's talk about it really quick to just go over some components and um, let's let's get it running and let me I'll show you guys later uh, towards the end of the video how uh, this the system works so uh, first things first uh, the system consists of an acrylic vacuum chamber and if you notice it has three one two three perforated shelves now these shelves are fully removable and uh, they're perforated for to allow for easier airflow to go through these holes. And when, when I pull them out, I'm gonna show you guys, you know, these shelves in more detail. And then in the back of the chamber, you can see right here and here, the vacuum and venting valve. There's solenoid vacuum and venting valves that are controlled by this vacuum controller. And then we have a, um, um, digital vacuum gauge that sends the signal and measures the vacuum and uh, it sends it over into this controller and this controller calculates the altitude equivalent so it shows the vacuum uh, in tor or millitor and uh, it also calculates the altitude equivalent uh, as uh, altitude uh, it can be uh, expressed as a function of um, absolute pressure. And then lastly, we have a manual venting valve. And this is just, you know, good standard uh, design practices to leave it in case um, you guys ever have vacuum or whatnot stuck in there. Uh, you can always pull it manually to vent and release any buildup vacuum that's in this uh, chamber. Um, I already mentioned the vacuum controller, and we're going to go over the vacuum controller in more details in a little bit. And then a rotary vane vacuum pump that is capable of going to about, uh, for this system, uh, it, it, it can go quite low, uh, probably about 10 or 20 millitor if you keep uh, pumping it down for a while. Uh, but for, for practicality reasons, uh, we're talking about uh, probably 100 millitor or 75 millitor, uh, and you, you can pump it down within a uh, fairly uh, reasonable time. So, um, and that's about, uh, be, be, before I forget, that's about 250,000 feet. I believe that's 100 millitor, but I'm speaking on top of my head. There is a table that we have on our website, and I'm going to provide a link below and you guys can take a look at the altitude versus absolute pressure table. So, um, let me also show you guys something else uh, before we go into the controller, is this is how you guys open the door. And like I said, these shelves are fully removable. And I'm gonna actually place them on top right here. So yes, they're fully removable and they can be configured. You can place them however you want. You can remove them fully, all of them, or have one or two, or whichever combination you guys prefer. So, okay, just wanted to remove it. All right, so let's go over and talk about the controller. And here it is. This is the controller. This is the HMI on the controller. And it can be controlled via these uh, five function items, okay? So... Uh, on our website, and I'm also going to provide a link below, is, um, is we're going to show um, a link to the user manual for this vacuum controller. And, uh, but it's, it's a fairly simple to operate uh, vacuum controller. Uh, it's only about five or six screens. So one, once you watch this video, you'll probably know 95% of how to operate this vacuum controller. So, all right, so it shows the chamber, uh, current chamber pressure, uh, which is in absolute um, tor, absolute pressure in tor, which is about 738. And you notice 
that it's a little bit lower because 760 is what the absolute pressure is at um, sea level. But since we're a little bit higher altitude, we have a little bit lower pressure. We're in Salt Lake City, Utah, so it's about 738 tor. And then we have a set point, which is about uh, 370,000 uh, millitor or 370 tor, okay? This is the actual chamber dwell time. Currently, it's at zero, but when you're running the test, uh, it's going to say test in progress. It's not going to say ready. And then the set point is 60 seconds. And this is for our illustration purposes. Uh, we are going to do 60 seconds. And now to toggle and go between screens, you hit F3. So this brings us into the set target vacuum screen. And for this uh, uh, test, we want to uh, simulate a target altitude of uh, 20,000 feet. Okay, so that's the target altitude, 20,000 feet, which is about uh, 370,000 uh, millitor or 370 uh, tor. All right, and that's, again, like I said, absolute pressure. It automatically calculates it, and you can adjust it, go up um, or down. So these two buttons will allow you to adjust it. Um, and I've already pre-adjusted it. So um, in, in the user manual, it shows you by how much each of these function buttons uh, will actually increase or decrease the target uh, uh, vacuum or the target absolute pressure. All right, so going on to the next screen, you hit F3. And we will set the dwell time of our test, of our cycle at 60 seconds. Uh, again, you can increase it by uh, a factor of 10 seconds or one second or decrease it factor of 10 seconds and one second. Uh, but like I said, it's set to 60. All right, moving on. Uh, this is a function where you set the dwell time to infinite, meaning that um, when you engage this, uh, when you set it from off to on, what's going to do is that it is going to go to your set target vacuum which in our case is 370 tor, and it's going to keep it there uh, for as long as um, as long as this is this thing is uh, plugged in. It's going to keep it at that set target vacuum, and this is a good function because it it actually monitors the target vacuum, and it turns the pump on and off. And it, it is a very very fantastic function if you guys are looking to do uh, any type of vacuum storage. Okay. For the altitude simulation test uh, that we're going to do, uh, this is not a requirement, but it, it is a nice function to have. All right, let's go hit F3. And this is the um, maximum evacuation time uh, that the system can be set to, and this is in seconds. And this is when you are evacuating the system. Uh, what's going to happen is that um, sometimes there may be a leak in the system or someone may uh, leave the um, uh, you know, manual venting valve open. And if that's the case, what's going to happen is that it is only going to evacuate the system for this set amount of uh, seconds. And then what's going to happen is it's going to turn it off. And this is a safety feature in case someone turns on the system, uh, starts evacuating it, and it never reaches the target vacuum. Uh, this feature will actually protect the pump and make sure that it turns it off and just uh, uh, essentially uh, stops the cycle. Um, so uh, usually we have it set at about 11,000 seconds. Um, this is uh, you know fairly, fairly good. That's what is that, about four hours, three and a half, four hours. All right, let's, let's get moving. So here is the uh, maximum ascent rate, and that's in feet per second. Now... What happens here is that um, for our um, uh, illustration, like I said, uh, we're going to leave this off, okay? But this needs to be turned on when you guys are running the ASDM uh, 6653 uh, altitude simulation test because you guys need to hit the um, uh, ascent uh, requirements per minute and the test specifies between a thousand feet and 500 feet um, every every minute or I believe it's uh, between 1,000 and 500 feet every 60 to 30 seconds I believe so um, this puts us at about 1,500 feet which is well within that range and uh, 
The same thing happens for the descent rate as well. Uh, we put it at about 1500 feet per minute, uh, which is well within our uh, set point. And um, the reason that we're not gonna do it here is because uh, in order to meet this requirement, uh, what's gonna happen is that the valve is gonna turn on and off and actually monitor the average ascent rate uh, that's happening in the system. And if we are ascending at about 1500 feet per minute or descending 1500 feet per minute, uh, it's gonna take us about seven minutes to go up and then uh, 60 seconds to run the cycle and seven minutes to go down. And we, we don't wanna be here for that long. So um, all, all you have to do is turn it on and toggle it on and then it, you're gonna have that function. And then here comes the manual mode. So if you ever uh, wanna run it in manual, uh, this one turns on the venting valve. On is actually closed, off is disengaged, and it means on as in on the solenoid. They're all normally open, so on means it's closed. And then vacuum valve on makes, means it's closed. And then vacuum pump on, off, uh, self-evident here, on and then off. Okay, so uh, let's run our test. Uh, and for our testing purposes, I have some cool stuff that I brought and let us see how this is going to behave. So I'm gonna open this, open the door and I just grabbed something. So our first specimen is uh, liquid IV. We got this from Costco. We are going to place this into the chamber and we are going to bring it up to an altitude equivalent of 20,000 feet. And then another thing from our snack bar is keto bar. Um, I think this is also from Costco, but I could be wrong. And this guy here, plant-based think bar. Again, probably from Costco. Uh, so, so here we have our specimen. Um, these are food bar specimens, so I'm going to close the door. One, and then two. And then, to start the cycle, all we're going to do is uh, press ready. Here we go. All right, so the pump is engaging. And you guys can see over here, uh, we're going down in a vacuum. And let's bring it up here closer because you guys can already see that this is expanding and this bar is expanding. So let's take a look here, as you guys can see. So let's go down here and take a look at the vacuum. So we're about at 440, 430. And what's gonna happen is gonna close once it passes about 370. Here we go. All right, it's closed. So now it's gonna hold it. So the pump, you guys notice the pump turned off. So it's gonna hold this for about 60 seconds, okay? So here we go. And it looks like they all expanded except the keto bar here. And the reason being is that, of course, the keto bar could have a permeable uh, packaging. Um, of course, the liquid IV and uh, the other, the Think Bar, looks like they have hermetically sealed packaging meaning that the air that's trapped inside is actually expanding. Uh, and it's also equal to um, the ambient pressure. And there's a pressure differential here of about 300 and something torr, uh, which is uh, qu quite a bit actually. It's about half um, atmospheric pressure. So we are at about 56, seven, eight, and it's gonna, you're gonna, right there. So it's venting, meaning, notice how they're deflating right there which means that the vacuum is being released and you guys can see it here too. And once it reaches uh, ambient levels, uh, we'll be able to open the door. There we go. There we go. And then of course you inspect it, but it looks like this seal held up pretty well. And I'm not really sure there could be a leak here. Oh, you know what? This is why it didn't expand. Looks like we have a broken seal right here. So it makes it make, makes sense actually. It didn't expand because as we pull the vacuum, now I don't know if the seal was already broken 
or not, but as we pull the vacuum, um, what happened is that the air expanded and it broke the seal. Uh, so, and it didn't happen here. Remember you guys, this was inflated and this was inflated and it looks like there's no damage to these packaging, except this guy. So that's how you can, you know, quickly determine whether your uh, specimen will hold up to a altitude equivalent of um, uh, 20,000 feet. And that's 20,000 feet above sea level. So let me talk about the ASTM 6653 test and the requirements and how you can program it into this vacuum controller. Okay, so this is what this is how you can do it. You go over here and you set the dwell time to uh, 3,600 seconds, which is um, uh, one hour. And that's gonna be your dwell time for this test. It actually has to hold the specimen for one hour, okay? And then, of course, leave that off. Leave this max evacuation time, 11,700 seconds, which is okay. Now this guy needs to be turned on right here. It's turned on. And then descent also needs to be turned on, turned on. And then you get back to the screen and uh, you are ready to go. Actually, not quite. What you gotta do is you gotta hold it. And let's get it to uh, 3,600 seconds. Let's actually do that. So about a thousand, when you hold it, you actually accelerate the um it just accelerates the increase so let me we'll set it up because our next test before our uh outgoing qc uh we're gonna have to qc the system so it's gonna have to be set up to 3600 anyways uh before we send this to our customer so bear with me here so 2800 29 there we go 31 32 33, 34, 35. I'm just gonna go over just on purpose. And here we go. Now we decrease 3600 right there. There we go. And this is off. We'll leave this the way it is on at 25 feet per second. And then descent rate on at 25 feet per second. And you are ready to go to actually perform your altitude simulation system as per ASTM uh, 6653. And I hope I'm saying this number right. I'm just uh, actually going off of my memory. So, all right, uh, this, is, this is the system. Like I said, there's another one identical to this one, but this is how it uh, looks. This is how it operates. And, um, that is pretty much it. So do you guys have any questions, uh, comments, concerns? Um, if you guys are curious about this, uh, feel free to um, email us, comment, um, uh, give us a call, and we will be happy to assist you. All right, so thank you guys very much for watching this video, and uh, you guys have a good one. Bye-bye.